Hi everyone, this is Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist of MarketGage.com, and welcome to another week. Here we are really following a tremendous amount of economic statistics, statistics that basically lean towards the possibility of the, of the economy contracting more into a stagnation and of course costs rising more of inflation. And even though Powell clearly said that he didn't think stagflation was a thing, Remember, he's also the guy who said that tra that inflation was transitory. So I thought the best thing to do today is really get you prepared as there was optimism about the jobs report not being as strong and the Fed possibly cutting. We know that they're already slowing down the pace of QT. And of course, the dollar responded in kind by selling off, all of which is generally perceived as bullish, right? But the Modern Family is such a great guy, and that's why I follow it with you week after week after week. So let's quickly go through, very simply, you can see weekly charts, and I made it as simple as possible. So if we start with XRT, this is so important, right? Consumer confidence has gone down, costs are rising, we know that people are eating out less, but they're still spending some money, clearly, or well, we would not see XRT with such a great pop that it did off of that 200 week moving average. So now what we really need to do is get back over where we were April 12th, which by the end of this week will be exactly a month ago. And that would be over that 75 level. We get through 75 this week, then yes, it would really be hard to do anything but be optimistic. But if we can't and we start to roll over 73.50 is definitely the pivotal point to keep in your mind. And if any point we break down under that 200 week, then of course, I think we'd be in somewhat of a trouble. If we move over to IWM, that's actually doing well. That's grandpa, right? That's the small caps. And we found a new place to be watching between 200 and 205. Breaks down under 200, can't be that optimistic, over 205. Yeah, in fact, I recently got a question, what happens if I wanna have a position in IWM for a year? And I basically said, as long as it holds 200, we never know where that could wind up. And certainly the value area has been underperforming. We move over to IBB. Now that's the biotech. It did well clearing back over the channel, but that 132 level is now very pivotal. And if we can't hold that, looks like we'll go back to test that 50 week moving average. And then moving down from there, the semiconductors. So of course, we're all about semiconductors in this market. Whenever anybody gets bullish, it's always NVIDIA. The lead hasn't reported yet. It's back over 900. That's why we're seeing our semis back through 220. But again, 220 has to hold. So keep your eye there. And then I think the most important sector right here is the transportation sector. And that's IYT. Again, weekly chart. Overall, better shape than, of course, what we've seen in, let's say, Grammy, um, that is not in a bullish weekly phase, this is. But nonetheless, it's just in the range of last week, and last week didn't really close all that great compared to the week before. So I think this is going to be the biggest one for you all to watch this week. Can we get through 67 in IYT? All good if we do, green light. But if we can't, and we start to roll back down again, then I think you really have to be duly warned. And then finally, of course, is the really persistent trading range of the regional banks, not necessarily so important to the picture, but nonetheless, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago as showing us that the market wasn't gonna go down anymore. And now that too has to get through its most recent high of 50-40, and then, of course, then perhaps the whole commercial real estate debacle that people feared wouldn't be so bad. So that's your macro. Now let's move over to gold. We have a picture here of the gold fit futures. And essentially, we can see that 2300 to 2280, exactly what we look for, support held. 2330, I'd say, is your pivotal number. And if we can get through 2360, particularly as I just laid out the modern family, depending on whether they're in sync with each other because everybody's happy or whether gold takes off over 2360 and the rest of the family starts to falter, stagflation evidence, number one. But number two, it would certainly give us a heads up that we can expect more inflation, which leads me to the last chart, which is natural gas. This was the last real commodity 
especially in the energy sector, to try to make a move. You can see now that if you're looking at the June contract here, it got through that 50-day moving average, and it's doing pretty good. So as long as it holds that 208, it looks like it could go up to about 240, maybe even 260, but more importantly, what is the impl implication? Number one, we know natural gas is being used in AI, so certainly the fact that it's been so undervalued is interesting. Number two, Russia-Ukraine is starting to look a little bit dicey again. And number three, we are starting to see some sales out of Texas going to LNG, and on in Canada as well, by the way, starting to pick up on LNG, while we in the U.S. have been a little bit caught short on supply. If Texas goes through any kind of power grid issues with a heat, potential as we're entering into a new season, that would be another bullish sign. So that gives you a good framework to watch as you go into the week. Thanks so much, and I'll see you all again soon.